So now let's dig into the details of what's actually inside the shipping folder. And before we get into the specifics of uh, the paperwork required for a specific show, let's flip to the back of the shipping folder, which contains all of the information that you would receive that's generic to every show. It has hazardous materials, uh, safety permits, it has uh, the company's uh, licenses for doing display fireworks. It has emergency information such as spills and uh, etc. It also has uh, sheets that basically guide you in what information is required to obtain if you were to get into an accident while transporting fireworks, um, etc. etc. Let's move to the primary material that is going to very slightly depending on uh, the specifics of the show. So this is known as the bill of lading. This lays out exactly what you're carrying in regards to explosives and the weight of the explosives. Uh, it's broken down into boxes, cases. Um, it also has the equipment weight on here. So if you ever go through a scale, uh, commercial driving scale, uh, this basically breaks down the entire weight of your transport. The most important thing to note on the bill of lading is that you must sign the bottom here where it says received by. Make sure you sign this before you leave the plant. Very important. Also important to note on here is the uh, shipper's number. This is basically the number that you would translate over to your driver's log. So stapled to the primary bill of lading is the statement of on-duty hours for any commercial driver. So you have to account for the last seven days. Any compensated work must count toward the hours on duty. And you list the hours that you performed compensated work for the last seven days here. Make sure you include the time, circle AM or PM, that you were last uh, off-duty month, day, year, always make sure you sign and you're done with this document. So in addition to the primary bill of lading, we also have the, uh, basically the copy of the bill of lading. Make sure you sign the copy as well. Stapled to the copy is the company work order that has uh, specifics on the show information, start time, uh, the customer contact information. Um, it'll have show notes, something that's specific to the show. Uh, also, you know, whether you're getting racks, mortar boxes, what type of firing system, uh, etc. So this is more of an informational sheet. This is something that uh, is very go-to for, you know, having a, a summary of the show and the contacts uh, that you need for it. Behind that, you're going to have your packing list, which basically lists all the product used in your show. You'll have the aerial packing list. So for this particular example, you can see it lists by caliber. So you have different sizes, 2.5 inch, 3 inch, 4 inch. It'll describe what of that caliber you have. So 2.5 inch color shells, quantity 50, so on and so forth. It'll give the quantity for each of these types. You'll have the description here for that given caliber. Then you'll also have a low-level packing list. So for low-level items such as cakes, candles, set pieces, etc., will all be listed here. It'll give a description of each device and a quantity, same as the aerial. Then on the subsequent page, you'll have the summary or recap page that breaks down by caliber what aerial devices you have, so number of aerial devices, and then there'll be a grand total at the bottom here. So this is, for this particular example, you would have 150 aerial devices. And then down here, it summarizes all of the low-level devices. For this particular example, we'd have one of this particular device, uh, two of this particular caliber, so you'd have a total of three low-level devices. Something else that's really important to note, especially on shows that aren't pre-scripted, is that typically in the description section of 
the low-level devices, you'll have the number of seconds that that particular device lasts. So a duration, in other words, uh, for that particular device. So if you had to choreograph your show out in the field, uh, those metrics will come into play and uh, really help you out in determining the length of your show and where a particular cake should go in your show. Something important to note when you're looking at the shelf summary recap page is that the row that corresponds to the finale is actually showing a total number of individual shells. So for example, if you had five chains which each had five shells within a chain, this would show a total of 25 shells for that particular caliber. And that's what's going to be reflected here. So the next page is typically your plot plan, which shows your firing location. It'll show your fallout area, which is going to be sized based on the largest caliber device that you're firing. Um, typically, that's overlaid onto a satellite photo. This example doesn't show that, but that's most likely what you're going to see. That way you can identify specific landmarks and be very precise in setting up your fallout area and making sure that that's maintained during your show. Moving on, this page is uh, very specific to the jurisdiction that uh, you're shooting in. This is the application for the permit which breaks down what you have in your show. This is what uh, Pyro Spectaculars or the display company will submit to uh, the authority that has jurisdiction over that particular show site. So now that we're done with this packet, we're gonna move on to the next section, which goes into your authorized route plan. So this first sheet, you sign right here. Uh, you must sign this before you leave the plant, um, which it says you acknowledge that this is your authorized route to transport the hazardous materials and that these are the only safe stopping places for you. In this particular example, there are no safe stopping places along the route. Um, sometimes you'll have uh, a list of various truck stops and whatnot that are approved safe stopping places for transporting hazardous materials. You flip this guy up you'll notice that you'll have the total mileage here, which is a number that you're gonna enter on your driver's log. Keep in mind that this is the round trip mileage, not the one-way mileage. You'll have a start and finish, so you're gonna start from the fireworks plant and you're gonna finish at the show site. So this page is a step-by-step -step description of your route uh, basically, turn left here, turn right there, etc. Um, it also breaks down the mileage at each point in your route to give you a better idea where you're at. This is the route that you must legally follow when transporting hazardous materials. Going to the next page, this is an exact duplicate of the seven day on duty hour statement that you filled out that was stapled to your bill of lading. So just copy that information onto this sheet. This is your packet receiver. This shows the checklist of everything inside of this shipping folder. So you need to go through and verify that each one of these items listed in here is contained in the shipping folder make sure that you sign it at the bottom here when you're done checking through the list. So the next form in the shipping folder is the pre-vehicle inspection report. And when you go through this, you're doing your pre-vehicle inspection, you only need to check boxes that correspond to a defective item. So you don't need to check boxes as you go through and actually check those things. You're only checking the box that corresponds to a defective item. It's very important to note. So at the bottom you see there's condition of the above vehicle is satisfactory. So if everything is good, you check that box. Then you, your driver signs this. So if you have a separate driver or if you're the operator and the driver, the driver is the person who signs this. He's responsible for the vehicle. And that's typically all you have to do with this form 
the above defects corrected. So you would check that box if there was a defect that you checked and you were able to correct it. Um, if it required a mechanic to do so, you would require a mechanic signature um, and then a separate driver's signature showing that that defect was corrected. Make sure that you're noting the time that you did your pre-vehicle inspection because that is something that you add to your logbook. So an additional form that follows that that also has to do with the transportation and pre-vehicle inspection. Most of the time this information will be pre-filled for you. This will have the driver's name, the driver's license number, not the pyro license number, but the driver's license number, um, the type of vehicle, the license plate of the vehicle, and the state that that vehicle is registered in. Uh, what you need to fill out is the inspection time. Most of the time the date will also be pre-filled for you, but double check um, the time that you conducted the inspection. Then when you look down here, you're going to go through and make sure that your vehicle complies with all of these regulations, and you're going to check complies when it does. Um, you're going to sign here. The driver signs here, not the operator. If the operator is the driver, then he would sign here. The date should be pre-filled. Uh, once you bring the truck back to the, sh uh, the plant uh, from the show site or if you have to stop um, along the route and conduct an additional inspection, uh, refer to the DMV rules for how often you need to stop for a vehicle inspection. Um, you would write the inspection city, the date, the time, and initial, and if there was anything you found uh, wrong with the vehicle, you would put in the remarks section. Now we're going to get into the paperwork that's required post-show. Uh, this is an internal document for Pyro Spectaculars. Most of your personal information will be pre-filled out here. It'll include your operator fee as well. If you have any expenses along the way, um, such as filling up for gas, uh, whatnot, uh, this is where you would uh, enter that information. You're going to put a few details about the show itself, um, the display pace, was it fast, very fast, moderate, etc. What the time of the display was, the duration of the display, was that duration and pace determined by the operator, the customer, or choreography that was done ahead of time. Same thing with the fire authority present, so your fire inspector was uh, contact made after the show, yes or no, any comments. If you had any equipment shortages or excess, product shortages or excess, and site suitability comments, concern, changes, or recommendations. So anything specific about the show site that you would recommend be implemented in the future. Um, product returns. So if you had a dud come down, a misfire, a cake that didn't shoot, etc., you're going to list that here for any live product that's being returned to the plant and any general comments uh, outside of any of these metrics. You can also uh, continue your comments on the back if you don't have enough room here. So the next form is also something that's done post display. Uh, this is done for the state. So this form goes to the state. So there will be some information pre-filled about the show and the show location. And then you need to make sure that you fill in the time of the display uh, from when to when, uh, was there any injuries, violations of fireworks codes, uh, any fires caused, and or any recommendations or comments uh, in this area here. This section is filled out by um, uh, the operator indicating which uh, crew members he had present at that particular show. So crew members' names will be printed on here. The operator will sign in this box, the date, will be uh, placed in this box. If your crew is larger than six people, um, you can write uh, additional crew on back of form here, and then just make sure you list your additional crew um, informally on the back of the sheet. This is important because this is the form that when somebody applies for their license, that the state fire marshal's office is going to go back and look at to ensure that the person who is applying for their license uh, actually did work that show, being that a certain number of shows is required to achieve your license. So um, it's very important that if you worked a show 
uh, as a crew member, you ensure that the operator puts your name on here. And as the operator, you need to make sure that you have every one of your crew members listed on here.